been an interesting day. Whenever I'm recording or doing ministry work, it's always interesting because it involves such a wide variety and spectrum of different abilities and talents to sometimes relate to people where they're at as opposed to wanting to have some sort of an agenda or some sort of pre-programmed response, you know, to people that might have questions, you know, and I think that's the amazing thing about being born again or having God inside you is that you know it's not yourself that gives an answer to every man that asks of you, you know, that would desire to know what is the hope that lies within you and why you're able to respond to questions in such a way that you're able to demonstrate the wisdom of God that he has put inside you and applied outwardly by way of his Holy Spirit being living in you so that you could manifest what Jesus would say to a person. And at some point in time, you sit back and you go, man, isn't that cool? Because you know it's not yourself. Now, I hope you know that because you see, there are men of God that forget that, that they study and go to theology school and they get full of head knowledge sometimes that they get filled with themselves and forget that it's God who causes us to remember by his Holy Spirit the things that Jesus has taught us and made real in our life and applied to us by his Holy Spirit. And whenever you see some wisdom or some wise counsel come out from a man of God or a man of God or a teacher, a Bible pastor, preacher, prophet, priest, king, whatever, that you must recognize it's not them. Because if you do, you're setting them up for a fall. Because they're really not anything but a vessel. And it's really God who is the one who's speaking. And so, at some point in time, you have to just kind of like filter out the person, you know, and don't get too carried away about the personality, but recognize the innate quality of what God is saying to you and how it fits in your life, that that is who really is making the word fit to you as you apply it to your day, each and every day as you walk with him. That's why God is alive. And that's why God is real. Because if it didn't fit, if there wasn't any way to practically demonstrate to yourself that God is real, then you have no business being a Christian or realizing that God is working in your life because you're just exercising a religion and an idealism. But if God is making your devotions and your emotions fit your day in the circumstances, it can't be a kismus because the mathematical equations prove that there's no way that it could fit your particular circumstances in such an exact way without there being some intervention by some dynamic being operating outside of a time dimension. And because of that, mathematically we can prove that God exists. Isn't that nice? In streams in the desert, therefore will the Lord wait that he may be gracious unto you. Blessed are all they that wait for him. Isaiah 30:18. We must not only think of our waiting upon God, but also of what is more wonderful still, of God waiting upon us. The vision of Him waiting on us will give new impulse and inspiration to our waiting upon Him. It will give us unspeakable confidence that our waiting cannot be in vain. Let us even seek now, at this moment, in the spirit of waiting on God, to find out something of what it means. He has inconceivable glorious purposes concerning every one of his children. And you ask, how is it? He waits to be gracious and that even after I come and wait upon him, he does not give the help I seek but waits longer and longer? God is a wise husbandman who waits for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience for it. He cannot gather the fruit until it is ripe. He knows when we are spiritually ready to receive the blessing to our prophet and his glory. He waits in the sunshine of his love to what will ripen the soul for his blessing in us. Waiting under the cloud of trial that breaks in showers of blessings is as needful. Be assured that if God waits longer than you could wish, it is only to make the blessings doubly precious. God waited 4,000 years till the fullness of time ere he sent his son. 
our times are in his hands. He will avenge his elect speedily. He will make haste for our help and not delay one hour too long. You know, we're told that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. But sometimes people faint because they don't wait on the Lord. They don't have the patience to have that long-suffering idea that God's answers do come, but maybe not in your way or your timing. And I know for me, all the scriptures that I've ever had a question about, every angle that mankind has ever invented in coming at God and trying to question Him as whether He's real or whether He's just or whether He's faithful or whether He's love or whether He's graceful or how it applies or what salvation is or if Jesus is real, I have always, always kept in the forefront of my mind waiting years sometimes for God to fulfill every single aspect of the question I had before I ever determined that I believe in Him. So, in a lot of ways, most of what I have done in my life has been long extensions of waiting for God to reveal completely His answer to any circumstance or situation that I felt like I needed to question. Now, the humorous part is, you don't ask the same questions I do. I ask a lot deeper <laughs> and a lot more of them, and I argued with about them. So, there's not much that I can honestly admit that I haven't questioned God about. And I can't think of him anymore. Because God does come through. Because Jesus said, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God who prayeth not, but give it to all men liberally. And by golly, <laughs> for me, that's exactly what he did. Oh well. So that's why I always say, if you don't know, just ask.